Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you a complete rundown of uh, Razer Synapse. Um, I'm going to be showing some timestamps on screen now, but first we're going to do the mouse and keyboard. We're going to skip over audio because I feel that's pretty self-explanatory. Then we're going to go to Profiles, Connect, Studio, Visualizer, and Macro. So if you want to know something about one of those, just go to the timestamp. I might put some uh, timestamps in the description that you can click on. So first thing we're going to do is the mouse and keyboard. Um, I put these together in one group because um, if you know how to change one thing on a mouse, you can change it on the keyboard because they're the same exact layout and have the same exact functions. So um, if you wanted to change a keybind or a key function on your mouse or keyboard, usually it's more common on the mouse for these buttons right here. Uh, what you can do, you just click on whatever you want to change and then you see all this stuff down here. Keyboard function. It is going to be a key, like a like a key on your keyboard. Mouse function, pretty self-explanatory. You can change your sensitivity with these buttons. Usually, it's uh, up here. I mean, default. Uh, if you wanted to um, make a macro and then put it on your mouse, you can assign that macro by. Once you made a macro, it would pop up right here. You click the macro that you want, and then um, I usually have it for toggle, but it depend de depends what macro you have. Um, if you want to switch profile, that's something we'll get into later. And this rest of stuff is really specific um, that we don't really need to get into. One last thing is the um, hypershift. So hypershift is a thing for Razer. It's like if if you don't have any macro keys on your keyboard, you just hold down the FN key, and then that puts you into hypershift. So I believe it works the same on the mouse. So essentially, whenever you click this hypershift button, these are all different keybinds. So whatever I change this to on hypershift will not happen unless I'm holding down the FN key or whatever you assign hypershift to. And so the very last thing we're going to cover is the uh, profile. Um, essentially, these are sets of keybinds for your mouse for what you want to do. Um, kind of. I'll, I'll explain. So for StarCraft, I have, oh my gosh, my sensitivity is going crazy because of uh, all these profiles changing. Um, I changed um, some of the keybinds on my mouse so I could uh, move around the map quicker. And so I have it to where whenever I launch StarCraft, this profile activates and these automatically change on my mouse. So as you see, this is kind of what the profiles look like. Um, whenever you, this is the profile name. And in here is, the programs that you want to launch the profile. It's kind of confusing, but I'll explain here. So, this is called StarCraft 2 because whenever the start, whenever StarCraft 2 launches, which is why it's right here, I want this to activate. And as I said for this, this will turn everything. So if I have StarCraft 2 audio, I don't have it. If I have a StarCraft 2 audio, that will launch. And well, you have you'd have to put it in the audio category but for my mouse will change whenever StarCraft 2 is launched for whatever profile this is so if I put if I wanted Diablo if I wanted this um, profile to launch whenever Diablo launches I just put it in there and now whatever this is now the, when, whatever keybinds I want whenever I launch Diablo will now activate. I just have to set them in here. As you see, Diablo is now here. And if I wanted to change something like, I don't know, you can, you can put that. And now whenever Diablo launches, my F key will be assigned to this um, button. So the next thing we're going to do is kind of talk about all the profiles. So each device that you have is going to have, not every device, but most devices that you have is going to have a profile and again like I said a profile is just essentially um, settings for your device so when I'm gaming I would want gaming audio um, and then when I'm on my Chrome I would want like music audio or like um, yeah yeah just if you can change the settings for your device for keyboard, it's I don't really use it, but it's just for um, keybinds. 
the keyboard, what I got confused is the Chroma Studio and these profiles. You cannot change the colors of your device through these. You have to use Chroma Studio. This again, like I just covered, um, just keybinds and just the select games that you have for your keybinds. Now here is Chroma Studio. So you're going to make your your um, Chroma, your 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 lights on your devices in in Studio, and then you make them a profile, and then you can change them here. So you see, whenever I'm playing StarCraft, I want it to look a certain way. When I'm in Chrome, I want it to look a certain way. And when I'm gaming, I want it to look a certain way. Now for Studio, it's it's so you can change all the colors on your device. It looks kind of complicated at first. All these aren't needed. These are just me testing. Um, but it's pretty simple. So if you want to make a new lighting, um, you just click Add, and then you can rename it right here. So I want this to be um, YouTube. And then so you see this is what is currently activating. And my keyboard is somewhat changing live with this um, down here, but you can see what's happening over here. So um, I would like my keyboard for YouTube. Oh no, I would want to make it say, hi wow there's like a rainbow in the background so what you would want for that is for rainbows which is which are waves i believe so yeah so whenever you want to use something you have to select it of what you want to be waving and then you have to save and now this will be waving not like a wave wave but like a wave uh but we of course have to change the color first and then the speed i usually have it at three because I certainly feel 50 is obnoxious but um, I like having you know around three or four and then you can change the angle of the wave which is really cool maybe I'll go for something like that you can have it splitting and you can, it's hard to explain but you can visually see it's kind of like opening up and then the width of the wave you can play around with that and then if we want something to permanently say something or be one color you just go to static and now we want to select multiple keys but as you see I'm trying to click on them it doesn't really work if you hold control you can select multiple keys and so I'm gonna make mine say hi there you go and I want this to be green because green is the color of razor and now, as you can kind of see, <laughs> um, it says hi. That's essentially um, how this, this works. Um, you can highlight stuff. Um, it's just hard to kind of do when, when you're in the middle because it'll select, you know, selected many more than I, what I wanted. I just wanted three. Um, it works in layers. So if I drag it, whatever you want on top has to be on top. So. If I want high to be visible over the wave, then I have to have it over the wave in the layer. If you don't want it to be seen, you just click the I button. And if you want to remove it, or actually no, if you want to change it, it goes here. If you want to remove it, you right click it and then you can delete it. Oh okay, wait, for connect is essentially um, profiles that are designed by um, companies for your keyboard. Now I said that kind of weirdly, but essentially, Fortnite has made a profile, you know, profile for your keyboard, and having this on will put that on your keyboard. I usually do not like having this on because I like having my own um, uh, profiles on my keyboard, but um, you can do whatever you want. I know for Fortnite, um, when someone's emoting, your keyboard does a uh, visualizer, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, over your keyboard now the second to last thing we're going to talk about is the visualizer I don't really understand why they have a visualizer but they do um, and essentially it um, will make your keyboard light up with your audio so if I turn on some music here let's go to no copyright sounds let me play one you see it is lighting up here um, 
now I'm gonna have this as quiet as possible so it's not overloading you sorry um, so as you see it is um, changing how it looks um, the delay this makes it more accurate putting it on fast will make it very like spazzy and quick it'll make it very spazzy and quick but um, much more um, accurate I would recommend having this maybe on two and it, it probably will look more of how you would imagine it looking background it changes the uh, background color so now there's that's happening behind it um, I'd recommend putting this on static I don't know green I don't know that's what my keyboard looks like this is really hard to see and not really um, important scale is how much it exaggerates it essentially so if you put on 10 it's just gonna be like really high bars but if you lower it down to two it's going to be smaller put it down to one it's even smaller I recommend having this on like a four so when it's loud it'll max out but if it's not gonna be maxed out you know most of the time now this macros, um, Razer macros, um, are really helpful. Um, I don't have any, uh, ironically. Oops. Um, so essentially, you're gonna click this arrow, you're gonna make a new macro, I just made four, and then you're going to want to record a macro. Now, um, yeah. Well, you can record or insert a macro. I'd recommend recording, because it is much easier. Um, and you can, I believe the shortcut key means um, to start recording. So if I click home, let's see. Yeah, whenever you click home or whatever you set it to, I set mine to home because I know I'm not going to click that when I'm recording a macro. Um, these very self explanatory, other than this, you can read that there. Anyway, so mouse movement tracking. Um, if you are going to want to record exactly what you're doing from the position that you're starting your mouse, like say in a game I needed to swap tabs quickly, I would want to use absolute, screen absolute, which, so say your mouse is over here whenever you start the keybind, or before you start the keybind, it'll start wherever you, wherever you started it every time, and it will move it exactly where you want it. If it's on, uh... If it's on foreground relative position, I'm just going to move it the distance in direction. So no matter where my mouse is, it's going to move that much. This is probably going to be more helpful in uh, third person shooters or something like that. But no matter where I st if I made a macro that's this, no matter where I start my mouse, it's just going to move across that distance. It's not going to go down here and move around that distance. It's just going to move anywhere on that distance. So for recording a macro, you um, can, I was recording my mouse movement, but you record that and it records whenever it releases, whenever you push it down and whenever you release it. So you see, I held D, I held A, I held S, then I released D, released, released A, and released S. Um, most games can um, like register key, key actions by like, I don't know, what is that? Fifth, oh, hundredth, five hundredths of a second. Um, so I know CSGO does. I wasn't using macros in CSGO. I was just, um, yeah. Um, mouse movement, a mouse movement was kind of finicky for me. Um, if you want to type a word, you can type text. So you can just put here, hello. And now whenever you run this macro, it'll put hello. If you type hello a lot, this is very important. Um, run command, I've never really played around with this, but it looks like you can run, I don't know, command console commands. And then loop, I don't think is very helpful because you can um, change that whenever you're assigning the macro. So here, let's make, let's make ourselves a macro. It's, it's gonna say hello. Oh, okay. and then we then it automatically saves, and then I want to assign this macro to a profile. So what was it? Alright, so I'm gonna assign it to a profile. So 
How's that gonna work? Where is the keyboard? So, I'm, I would make a profile in, in one of those other things, and whenever I would want this to happen, I'd put it on a hypershift. So, whenever you're, when it's, when it's on hypershift, any key that you touch is separate from your actual keyboard. So it doesn't matter if you play with the escape button because it's still going to work normally unless you're holding down the uh, FN key. So I would like to make it a macro, so you click macro 1 which is what I made and then I want this to toggle. So what that, what that means is whenever I hit hold fin escape it's going to be typing hello multiple times. I'm going to show you. It's going to be typing hello multiple times until I stop it. Normally, you'd have to hold it down, but I think it's more helpful if you um, just uh, to, to talk, uh, at least for the things that, that I'm doing. Anyway, that's it for the tutorial today. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.